<laughs> oh, what's going on everybody? So this is uh, the first video that I'm doing for this channel, Nicology. Uh, Nicology, Northeast Ecology, New England Ecology, whatever uh, seems to make the more sense for you. And of course we are in New England right now. We are in uh, scenic Middlesex County, Massachusetts. Uh, and you're probably already thinking, hey, there's a ton of snow on the ground. What do you mean you're going to go look at plants? Well, we're going to go look at the, uh, you know, earliest bloomer we've got up here. You know, Simplicarpus fetidus, aka the uh, eastern skunk cabbage. Uh, it's probably a lot of context to get out of the way in this first video, so it's going to be pretty sloppy. This also probably won't come out until I have a chance to go out a little bit later, you know, in the spring as things really get going. But, uh... I came down here about a week ago, and it was actually snowing on me a week ago, and uh, skunk cabbages were just getting going. Um, it's about a week later now. It was, you know, dumped eight inches of snow on us yesterday, but then two days before that it was 70 degrees, so if you're not from the region, uh, one important thing I gotta get out of the way here up in New England is that, uh, you know, we, we throw out our uh, weather like Powerball numbers you know, temperatures and whatnot. Um, but uh, to clarify something, even in the wintertime, you can still have, you know, plenty to look at uh, as far as, uh, you know, plant life goes. I'm actually gonna, you know, show you our first plant right here. You know, uh, unfortunately this is an invasive plant, but very common in this area. I mean, pretty much common all over the place at this point. This is uh, Fallopia japonica, Japanese knotweed. Uh, pretty easy to distinguish by the fact that it's got these, uh, you know, the, oh, come on, focus for me, three wing, eh, whatever, three wing Samaras, you know, Samara, winged seed, same thing you get on a maple tree. I'm just going to be throwing out terms and just assume that I'll put definitions down, you know, once I, once I edit the video, but uh, I got, you know, you see this everywhere, uh, kind of has like a bamboo like stock, it's hollow grows like a weed, is a weed. Uh, one example of a ornamental gone rogue turned invasive. And uh, unfortunately, we'll see plenty of that as this channel goes on. Um, and if I remember correctly, there's a, another one uh, invasive species we'll be able to look at up over here. Actually, maybe not. Maybe the snow will cover it. But then again, it does grow up the trees. Uh, one of the... Um, uh, I think they call them spindle vines or spindle trees. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's right there clinging to the side of that tree. Um, yeah, we'll go up and look at that. But, uh, yeah, like I said, it was 70 degrees a few days ago, and now, you know, I'm walking through packed snow. Yeah, that, that would be that would be this guy. Uh, I, won't, I won't bother spending too much time, but this is Euro, Euro, Euroimus Fortunae, a you know, fortune spindle tree, uh, also from... East Asia from Japan. Uh, uh, this is in the same family, um, Celestraceae, as a really bad uh, invasive. We get Celastris orbiculatus, the the Oriental bittersweet, which I think even most casual um, people interested in botany or even gardeners might, you know, be familiar with that one. Same same family, different genus, uh, and we're gonna keep going because I'd much rather show you uh, the actual, you know, native plant that's going to be hopefully in flower uh today and it is uh the end of february right now uh it's not not too terribly cold right now of course yesterday it was you know freaking 12 degrees 15 degrees i think and today it's you know upper 30s the sun's out it's you know quite a beautiful day and i mean as you can see even in the last 24 hours since the snow has fallen people have been coming down here uh you know the rail trail I figured I'd start small with these, you know, take it one species at a time, point out some interesting stuff. Um, and I mean, you know, I'll explain why, you know, this plant that we're looking at, the Simplicarpus fetidus, the skunk cabbage, is able to do its thing, even in the middle of winter. Um, to the left of me right now, there's the stream that we're going to go down to when I find the little access way. You know, but for right now... Uh, I'm just going to get myself out there. I'll check back in. If I see anything interesting, I'll show you another invasive if I can get to it. The uh, garlic mustard 
scientific name I, I can't recall right this second but uh garlic mustard is what it's called and uh we might see some of that too the snow might have covered it but that's uh starting to uh come up for the season i'll check back in in a minute There's a beautiful uh, hemlock tree right here. Suga uh, canadensis. Uh, <laughs> I can't really cross it uh, right here, but uh, where I'm gonna go up there a ways is a way to get across. And that's presumably where we're gonna see uh, our target species. But uh, I, I was walking over there uh, last weekend and I was underneath that guy. Uh, and I don't know, he's just a nice, nice hemlock tree. Uh, most of the overstory here is actually, you know, there's some white pines, you know, there's a white pine, white pine, there's a few going this way, but uh, most of this is all uh, oak and beech trees, obviously, <laughs> you can't tell what the hell we're looking at because nothing's on the leaves right now, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm certainly walking through the thick of the snow, but I wanted to come to this little spot, number one, because it's beautiful, number two, I wanted to see if I could get a good, uh, you know, a good view of this guy here. From the other side from where i saw him tasuga canadensis uh eastern hemlock very um ubiquitous tree you know basically in the you know northeastern half of the united states i mean it's by no means a rare tree um there's pretty thick stands of it you know elsewhere around here but uh i just like this guy if i can uh, get up underneath them a little bit later maybe we can find a cone or something uh i'll certainly show you how to differentiate uh tasuga from um uh, any of the spruce trees, which would be Picea, or any of the fir trees, of which there are none uh, this far south and at this low of an elevation, you know, we're only a couple, may maybe not even a couple hundred, maybe about 130, 150 feet above sea level here, and we're about 30 minutes, you know, due northwest of Boston, so certainly not up in the higher elevations like I'm hoping to show you guys a little bit later as this goes on. You know, we're, we're, we're still in the Baston area, uh, you know, I don't have the uh, I don't have the New England accent. I'm not, I'm not from Massachusetts. I'm from I'm from uh, New Hampshire, so we got a little bit different of an accent. But uh, that's a wicked nice tree right there, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna keep going. Well, it didn't really take long to find one, so that guy down there, uh, uh, whatever, my finger can't get in the thing, but whatever, you get my point. That guy down there is uh, what we're gonna be looking at. However, um, I went down in this last week. I'll zoom back out. I was down in this last week and it was, uh, you know, I fell through ice in certain spots and it was overall not that great of a time. Uh, but there's one right there. Um, we're going to keep going to another spot where I was able to get a lot closer to him. Um, but yeah, that, that is a skunk cabbage just starting to get going. And uh, hopefully we'll see some in bloom where I saw them uh, a little bit further along in development down here. Okay, so we're... Uh get into the area uh, where I saw a lot of them uh, looking like they were getting pretty close to uh, you know blooming oh this guy fell over can't remember if I saw that last time and as you can see uh, I mean most of this area when I was here last week was not covered in snow it's pretty thought out but um, there's just little streams kind of running every which way you know you could say we're in um, kind of a moist forest setting, damp forest setting, not, not, a, not a bog, not a wetland, um, just a very, very damp uh, <laughs> uh, oak and pine woodland, which is extremely common for the region. It's going to be something we're spending a lot of time in uh, and a lot of time examining the species. But uh, I'm getting kind of worried that uh, there might be, you know, just too much snow covering the ice. Um, but uh, I, I do have hope, and if I can see one, um, I'll ex you know I'll be able to explain why you know what why why I would think they'd be poking out. Oh hey, look at this! Actually, we're gonna look at this real quick. I saw these last week, and I wasn't sure what the hell I was looking at. There's a bunch of them over here. I only saw one last time. Oh yeah, so these guys are a, um, the fertile fronds of sensitive ferns. I'll put the, the family name for, for sensitive fern, that's the common name, uh, down below. But these are the, uh, these were the fertile fronds. These were what was holding on to the, uh, 
to the spores and whatnot. Of course, ferns don't do um yeah god i don't know i don't know i don't know anything about about fern taxonomy i just know about anatomy you know that's uh pretty fundamental if you're going to learn about plants you should start with like you know non-vascular plants bryophytes mosses ferns equicetum stuff like that and then work your way up through conifers you know and then uh, seed plants and ultimately up to flowering plants but these are the uh these were the fertile fronds for a sensitive fern I, Pick one of these guys off there. I can show you my hand. It tumbled out of my hand, of course. Uh, there we go. Yeah, and those are all just the uh, just the little spores right there, I suppose. And uh, the spores will, uh, you know, hopefully in the spring, not now, will uh, come off that stalk there, hit the ground, uh, germinate, uh, not into a fern. It's important to note these the spores on ferns do not germinate into ferns what they do is they'll germinate to something called a uh, gametophyte which is a significantly reduced uh vegetative state of a fern uh, which will produce a sperm or an egg um, those will combine into an embryo or into a zygote then into an embryo and that embryo then develops into um, the, the fern shape that you would typically know and what that is referred to as the sporophyte stage um, all plants do that in some way or another it's it, i don't want to say that it's complicated it's not but uh you, you know you, if we're not gonna we're not gonna get into it while we're looking at a couple of seemingly dead um you know fertile fern fronds but uh yeah sensitive fern um, I only know that because I took a picture of these because I didn't know what the hell I was looking at. Uh, sent it, posted on the internet. Somebody told me what I was looking at, and uh, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, maybe we'll come back, you know, later in the spring. There's some more of them. And they're kind of everywhere. Now that I know what I'm looking at, there's a whole bunch going that way too. Now that I know what I'm looking at, I kind of see them everywhere. But uh, yeah, I didn't know what those were a week ago, and now I do. And that's going to be kind of a reoccurring theme of this channel if I have anything to say about it. Because uh, I definitely don't know everything. But uh, I'm going to keep going here. And hopefully next time I tuned in, I'm able to find a, a skunk cabbage for you. Sure. <laughs> you know, I'm beginning to think maybe I was a little bit optimistic thinking I was going to find any of these in flower this week. Well, here's one up close, and this guy is not even close to being, not even close to being open yet. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever. Live and let live. Uh, we still got out for a nice hike. Oh, Jesus, let me get the freaking camera on there. So, uh, that's simple carpus fetidus. Uh, I'm thinking I might make this sort of the, uh, the intro to this video. Uh, one way or the other, this is going to be pretty much episode one, uh, for the series and uh maybe we'll come back in a week or two and we can find some of these guys actually you know opening up shop for the season um if you know they they do open as early as february it's the end of february right now and they will certainly be uh blooming in march and then typically by april i guess they they're pretty much closing up shop in april um and i'll spare my whole at length explanation for this unless of course i come across one in the next couple of minutes uh, in which case I might end up heading back and we'll make this sort of like the, uh, this will be the, um, the, the, the crash test or not crash test. What the, what the hell am I saying? This will be the, um, you get what I'm saying. It, it's a rehearsal. It's a rehearsal. But anyway, that, that is, that is another one of them, you know, doing his thing where he was able to do his thing. Yeah. You know, I don't necessarily think we're going to find one in bloom. Uh, but that's okay. You know, I was here last week. You know, I, I, I got the idea to start doing this channel, you know, in the middle of the winter, which was not necessarily, uh, conducive, we'll say, to, um, showing you anything interesting. Although this flower, when we do see it, is, uh, quite interesting, quite bizarre, quite alien, if I might add. Um... So basically today I got to show you a couple of uh, uh, dead or, no well not dead, they're going to rest assured they will come back with the vigor as soon as it gets warm enough. Uh, you know, uh, invasives, you know, some stuff that looks pretty dead and, uh, you know, the emerging shoots of two individuals. Um, uh, you know, we'll give it a week or two and we'll come back out, you know, and in in only in a month or so there'll be a whole bunch of stuff, you know. Oh, look at that. 
the building a walkway because that one down there got tore up. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, so anyway, yeah, like there'll be plenty of stuff going on in another month or so. Uh, so I, I may leave this in. I may take this out. But, um, you know, I'll probably leave it in. Just you shorten this down to like the first five minutes of the video. And I'll tell people to skip ahead at the beginning. But, um, yeah, this is basically going to be the format of most of the channel. And obviously, it's going to get better. Oh, look at that. What the fuck? What is that? It's the hairy vine going up. Who knows what that, who knows what that does? We'll see. See, this is, this is all new to me. Uh, and maybe it's new to you. Maybe you're an actual, you know, PhD candidate in botany or life science or biology, and you're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? This guy sounds like a goddamn idiot. But, um, you know, you can go watch the uh, introduction to the channel video I put up. I did a little introduction to ecology. You know, my understanding and my takeaway from it, why I think it's important. Um, somewhat subjective. I tried to remain objective in the important aspects, but... You know, this is going to come piece by piece to me and to you. And uh, hopefully, you know, I get enough footage this winter, you know, put videos together. Uh, not, sorry, get enough footage this summer, this spring, summer and fall. And, you know, I can put this stuff together over the course of, you know, weeks and uh, have, have a steady release of material. But uh, like I said, I probably won't put this out till April, maybe May, probably April. I'll have stuff to show you in April. Um, so, yeah, we're going to make this uh, first sort of series uh, early spring in Massachusetts. Um, right now we're in Middlesex County. I'm going to take you to some locations uh, outside. We'll do series. We'll do um, one-off episodes. You know, some of this stuff might, uh, you know, when, when, when it's a time of year like this when there's not much to show you. I'm going to kind of get in where I can and piece it together. But, um, yeah, we'll just see how this goes. I'll chop this down. I'll put it in front of the uh, video I ultimately make when these things are going off. Uh, I might actually take you to a different location for that one. I might take you down to a cranberry bog. They got a few towns south of here. And we can look at uh, what a cranberry bog looks like in the off season. Uh probably a bit more conifer diversity so you'll be able to see you know what some of the trees look like before you know the broadleaf trees you know these deciduous guys up here have sprouted their leaves for the winter you know and, and, and you know, I kind of just wanted to come out just to get out of the uh, get away from technology for a minute if you've seen the news this week of course this is yeah this is that week this is the end of February and I won't get into it but uh you know, a certain event happened uh, over there in Europe uh, a couple days ago. And, uh, you know, I don't feel too good about it. I'll say that. Uh, so it's always good to get out of the house. This is uh, somewhat meditative for me. Hopefully it becomes somewhat meditative for you. Maybe it already is if you're already into the stuff. And if you're not into the stuff, I certainly hope that I am able to, uh, you know, Get you into it a little bit. Yeah, the stream is beautiful. It sounds really nice. But um, why don't we cut it off here? Um, yeah, rest assured, I'll get better at facilitating this. This is this is the first time I've ever done this. Um, so we'll uh, you know pick up from here, maybe in a week or two. We'll see what's going on next week if we get me. Yeah, who knows? It could be seventy degrees, and we could get another, or we could get another foot of snow dumped on us. I really don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. All right, we'll, we'll chop it off here. And uh, for me, I'll see. You, I'll pick it up in two weeks for you. It'll uh, have some nice sort of like transition, and then it'll be uh, me a couple weeks later, hopefully uh, showing you uh, Simplicarpus fetidus, the uh, eastern skunk cabbage, and going on at length about why it is so uh, biologically. And environmentally interesting so stick around we'll be right back oh there's a guy <laughs> I don't know anything about bugs but uh what's he doing 
I don't know if you know this, sir, but you're on uh, snow. You probably came out because it was, again, it was freaking 70 degrees two days ago. And then he got a foot of snow dumped on. He probably doesn't know what the hell's going on. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Maybe he can tolerate the snow. Maybe he can't. But uh, best of luck to you. Best of luck to you, sir. Okay, there's actually, there's another one. He's alive. And another one. I don't know what these guys are doing, but I walked right over them when I came through here the first time, and now I'm seeing them kind of everywhere. I'll have to look up and see. Uh, here's another guy. I'll look up and see what kind of bug this is. They got the little two little antennae on their butts. There's another one. Maybe they like the snow. Is the snow a part of your ecology? Do you do you rely on this? Do you take advantage of this somehow? I'm asking fucking yelling at bugs on the side of a trail. You know? Two of them. I don't know what the heck they are. I don't know much about bugs. I mean, he's got wings. He's got two little antennae on his butt. Two little antennae on his head. Uh... Yeah, I'll get back to you on this one. I'll put it, uh, I'll put it, you know, on the screen here. Whatever these guys are. I don't know what they're doing, though. They're coming up right out of the snow. Look, there's another one. See, this is, you start paying attention to one aspect of biology. You start paying attention to all the aspects of it, I guess. Who the hell knows what that guy is? Certainly not I. Do you see him? Walking out of the woods is a big... Big freaking hawk over there. You know, we're, we're not too far from uh, Lowell. And they got uh, quite a healthy population of uh, predatory birds. Of course, the Merrimack River. I mean, we're in Middlesex County. The Merrimack River is not far from here. Uh, and they do boast quite an impressive uh, array of uh, raptors and, you know, predatory birds. But, uh... <laughs> I'm a little scared of this guy. You know, we'll get a little closer. We'll see. Of course, I was going to end this video, and then I found a cool bug. Now I'm looking at a cool bird. It's going to be real quiet, you know, real quiet. Okay, so it's a week later now. I'm kind of standing in the middle of a bog. Uh, as you can see, there's still plenty of snow, but there is less snow than we had last week. And uh, exactly as I predicted, uh, skunk cabbages are going absolutely wild over here. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of worried I'm stepping on one. There's one right there, one right there, doing their thing. Uh, and we're gonna talk about their thing right about now. But what I can finally give you Oh, there's another one right there, right underneath me. Yeah, they kind of just blend right into the uh, the muck here, and this is, in fact, uh, quite mucky. But uh, I'm going to get up close to this guy. So, uh, skunk cabbage, eastern skunk cabbage, simple carpus, fetidus. Um, there's a couple of, uh, there's another uh, plant known as skunk cabbage, the western skunk cabbage, um, which is... Uh, not in the same genus as this. This is in the genus Simplicarpus, uh, in the family Araceae, and the um, the other uh, the western skunk cabbage is in a genus Lysochiton. So Simplicarpus and Lysochiton are two genuses uh, uh, that make up a, a, a subfamily of the family Araceae. Actually, one of the more basal subfamilies, just meaning that it um, broke off from the rest of the family earlier. Uh, also in there with the um, uh, the, the Golden Club, uh, whose scientific name I'll put down uh, below there. So you get Golden Club, you get, which is the, the only species in its genus, you get the Golden Club, you get Simplicarpus, of which there are five other uh, species. Um, um, they're all 
spread out through Japan, Korea, Russia, basically Northeastern Asia. And then you get uh, Lysichiton. You get Lysichiton americanus, americanum, whatever the hell it is. Uh, the Western skunk cabbage, different different genus again. And then there's also another species of Lysichiton, which is in Asia. Um, now, if you're familiar at all with uh, aeroid plants, say you got a peace lily, say you've got a, something like a monstrera, something like a philodendron, this is in that same uh, family of plants. This is a raceae, um, aeroid, monocot, it's a mono, monocot, um, you know, similar to uh, asparagaceae, you know, with the asparagus, uh, uh, hostas, um, uh, what's the other big one in there? Well, well, whatever, you get the point. It's a monocot, monocotyledon, uh, sprouts with one leaf when it blooms, and um, specifically with the aeroid plants, they have a really unique flower structure. And this right here is not a leaf, this is a bract, uh, specifically termed as a spathe. And if we can open this up, let me get on the other side of it. We're going to open this guy up. And in there is the spadix. And what that is, is a cluster of small flowers. You can see this guy is dripping with pollen. A cluster of small flowers. Ooh, kind of smells like, kind of smells like shit. Uh, is a cluster of the small flowers. So this entire uh, unit here is a spadix on the inside there. Uh, and if I could zoom in more, if I could get really up in there, each one of those is an individual flower, remember? Uh, and a spathe. Spadix, spathe, it really, really smells like shit. Uh, <laughs> um, and that is the flowering structure uh, that you'll routinely see with aeroid plants, plants in the family Araceae. Uh, and this guy does another really cool trick and I can actually feel it doing it. Um, these exude uh, warmth. They, they're thermogenic plants. One of very, very few thermogenic plants. Uh, and that provides, you know, an ideal habitat for, you know, early emerging insects. And as you can imagine, a thawing wetland probably has a lot of insects emerging. Yes, yeah, so there's even more right there. Uh, relying on uh, this plant as kind of their only source of nectar. We're uh, in the first week of March right now, this is still very much considered to be winter for New England. Uh, and these guys are basically the only shop open in town as far as uh, nectar sources go. Uh, oh, someone was just running behind me. I hope they're, you know, not thinking I'm weird down here screaming at plants. Um, so this guy is open for business. Uh, he just looked like he just popped open. I saw some other ones. Obviously, there's a whole bunch around us. I saw some more up the trail. Um, none were quite open yet, or if they were, they were in the middle of the water and I couldn't get to them. Um, but yeah, and the other thing I would like to point out about this guy, what he's doing, um, the fact that he smells like shit, the fact that it's thermogenic, and the fact that it's uh, in the family Araceae. If you've ever heard of the so-called corpse flower, um, which is a amorphophallus titanum, I think, um, I'll put the, again, I'll put the scientific name in the, in the video, I'll edit it in, but, um, Amorphophallus is the genus name. The corpse flower, the largest inflorescence produced by any flowering plant, I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, not the largest flower, mind you, because again, spadix and spathe, the flowers on it are actually quite small, uh, but the actual inflorescence itself, which is the entire flowering structure, is the largest inflorescence produced, um, by any plant. As far as I believe, I, I could be um, either misconstruing that or not understanding that properly. But also, you know, same family, same flower that smells like ass, uh, same weird looking flower structure, uh, and also a thermogenic plant, albeit one that is, for whatever reason, considered to be far more exotic than this cool one, which grows, I mean, absolutely everywhere in New England, absolutely everywhere on the East Coast of the United States. Um, just a really enigmatic flower. I think it's underappreciated. It's one of the only things I could really show you going off right now. Um, yeah, great, great flower, important ecological resources, basically holding uh, this wetland together because underneath here uh, is a massive rhizome, which if you don't know what that means, just the root system, an absolutely massive ropey rhizome underneath it. Allegedly, this is used for uh, medicinal purposes. I don't know about that. Allegedly, you can eat the young shoots. So when it starts sprouting leaves, which I mean, this guy's starting to sprout some leaves here, uh, it 
allegedly they're edible like these shoots would be edible I, I don't take my word on that i'm not eating it i'm not putting my mouth anywhere near this thing but uh simple carpus fetidus eastern skunk cabbage first thing blooming in the year and uh, an important ecological uh member of our environment you got a little bit better of an angle coming around here and i actually find the color of this inflorescence to be quite beautiful the purples it's a lovely uh sort of a vomit color but uh quite beautiful and as you can see that thing is absolutely dripping with nectar ready for the hungry pollinators and uh i suppose i got a couple other things i should show you i last week i promised you i'd show you that uh hemlock over on the other side of the wetland here and then uh on my way back to uh uh where it is i'm heading to uh there's a good example of uh the damage that celastris can do the celastris orbi orbiculatus the uh Oriental bittersweet. I actually got another one from that family, another Celestraceae. We're gonna, I'll show you a burning bush too. There's yet another freaking invasive in the family Celestraceae. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna keep going. Uh, say goodbye to my stinky friend here. All right, I gotta kind of uh, hurry this along because I'm losing light here. But uh, we're in a part of this uh, swampy area that I came a couple of weeks ago, I came a few weeks ago. Oh, here's one of the uh, one of the Fagus species. Here's a here's a beech tree, probably Fagus grandiflora. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know why. Look at there's one over there. The leaves persist on these guys pretty well. Um, definitely a, one of the beech trees. I don't know. I, I, I want to assume grandiflora because that's the American. Or not the uh, yeah the American beach, but uh, could be a uh, sylvatica, could be the European chestnut. Um, that's a whole story for another day. Uh, uh, Fagus dentata, which is the American chestnut, is a famous example of a species being uh, nearly wiped out uh, because of um, you know invasive pathogens. The uh, ch European chestnut blight, um, which we'll get into that. Obviously, this one's not. Not dentata because it would have completely different uh, leaf margins, but nonetheless, one of the beaches, presumably uh, Vegas grandiflora. Uh, they also get the European chestnut, which is uh, growing much more ornamentally. Uh, and you can see there's quite a few of them, quite a few little guys. They're not they're not getting big. Maybe maybe because they're little, the leaves are able to persist. Maybe if I come back here in the summer, we'll uh, see some of the ones with uh, you know see some ones up there but I, I who knows um so we're gonna take a little walk through here because i saw um another uh you know invasive species that i kind of wanted to point out because it's yet another member of the family celestraceae um, spindle tree family and this one is um the so-called burning bush uh, or the winged spindle tree. It's another uh, species in the genus Euonymus, just like uh, Euonymus fortunae, which is uh, the one that I, the winter creeper that I showed you last week. Oh, here's one right here. Yeah. So this guy is another. Oh, he's kind of a sad looking specimen. So this guy here, obviously no foliage, is another uh, member of the genus uh, Euonymus. Euonymus, I don't know, however you pronounce it. Uh, and this is the burning bush, so-called, because in the fall it has a brilliant red uh, foliage, which is why it's here in the first place. You know, yet another um, species introduced uh, as an ornamental species, uh, grows completely rampant. Uh, and you can tell it because it's got these kind of uh, these fragile little, uh, you know, winged margins on the leaves that I guess uh, persist through the winter, but then maybe I guess they grow again in the spring um another member of the family celestraceae another invasive member of the family celestraceae of course uh don't don't blame the <laughs> hey you know what is actually jesus you can see one celastris orbiculatus perhaps there's no berries on it so i can't confirm it but, but probably uh you know there are native species in that family here we have an american bittersweet um that's pretty easily distinguishable from the uh oriental bittersweet because the berries only uh come at the terminal ends of the plant they don't grow along the stem like they do with the uh, uh celastris orbiculatus but uh um yeah uh euonymus alatus is this uh, species the burning bush or the um uh winged uh, spindle tree but we're gonna keep moving um i'm gonna hopefully be able to show you 
a hemlock tree. Maybe uh, we'll see another skunk cabbage. There was a whole bunch over here, too, that were pretty far along when I came here weeks ago. Uh, but that's not my main focus. Uh, you remember this guy from last week. We, 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 we've been down this road before. But we're going to look at hopefully two things really quick. And then we're going get to the, get the hell out of here because it's getting dark. Not that I'm in the middle of the woods or anything. I'm just you know, on a uh, municipal trail, so to speak. Oh, it's not easy. Well, it was easier last week. There was more snow walking. So either way, I'll be okay. But uh, yeah, um, really, really quick lesson. We're going to get out of the way you know, early on into this into this series or show, whatever you want to call it. Uh, in the East Coast, you get a lot of invasive species, and they most of them were freaking planted as ornamental species introduced you know, in the 1800s before anybody knew any better. Uh, so don't do that. Always plant native. Always do your research if you're going to get into gardening or... You know, anything like that. Fortunately, a lot of the stuff you would plant as far as food crops, um, you know, a lot of that stuff does not uh, necessarily escape its cultivation. A lot of those are sterile, you know, propagated from rootstock, propagated from the roots. Um, I mean, I'm not an expert in agriculture. I, I don't really care to study agriculture. Oh, here's where I saw one of those cabbages was really far along. Yeah, here's a big one. Here's a, yeah, you can really see. Those wings get thick. This is a this is a big bastard of uh that uh Euonymus uh Alatus burning bush. They, they are they do look nice in the fall, you know, they get the brilliant red leaves. I can see why people planted them as ornamentals, but god they're freaking everywhere and they're just they just grow like haphazardly all over everything. But let's see if we can see this uh particular uh area where the skunk cabbages were going. I saw one that was really, there was one that was super far along up over here. Something's stabbing me. Ow. Oh, probably Japanese barberry, another invasive species. Are you detecting a theme here with uh, um, ornamentals being unfortunately planted uh, just because no one could, I mean, no, no one understood it back then, but now we should all know better. Yeah, yeah, they're down here, the skunk cabbages. I'm not seeing the one that I I thought I saw last time the one that was really far along, but yeah, these ones aren't open like the one that I was uh, able to show you back there. But uh, more simple carpus doing their thing in the same exact habitat just on the side of the river. All right, I'm going to show you guys a hemlock and then I'm going to have to sign off. All right, I'm going to use my last little bit of light here to show you guys uh, a tree that I really like. Uh, and this is uh, Tasuga. Uh, Tasuga canadensis uh the eastern hemlock uh family on this guy pinaceae so these are relative to the pines you know pinus abies the firs the spruce trees uh he is a in the pine family but he is a hemlock tasuga again is the genus only species of tasuga we get on the east coast um and i guess these if you don't know what you're looking at could be um easy to confuse with the spruce tree or a fir tree um but then you know i'll show you you know how oh geez i'm gonna fall down here aren't i uh no cones on this guy unfortunately i wish i could show you a cone oh yeah there's where i was standing last week when i showed you this guy from the other side but let me uh pull a branch here and i'll show you you know how you can kind of differentiate between this and a, and a spruce or a fir tree all right so you'll know no needles on the branches. A uh, spruce or a fir tree would have, you know, needles going up the branch too. Um, you'll also note if you look at the cross section of this, this is flat. A spruce or fir tree would have uh, needles growing kind of in a whirl around. A uh, taxa species, you do this as well. However, you have uh, much bigger needles. And instead of having, um, can we zoom in? Let us. I have no control over that. I'm going to get a better camera at some point. Uh, there we go. Uh, the white undersides, and there's actually two stripes. So those are the stomata. Those are what the needles are able to respire through. Uh, oh, there we go. That's a good one. So two two stripes right there. Um, you will have the yous have those as well, um, and a, uh, but they're green. And of course, uh, you know, yous are in their whole own uh, whole own family taxaceae. Uh, it's quite striking when you actually you know, see the difference between them. But uh, this is not uh, taxa. This is not a taxa species. This is a tasuga species, eastern hemlock. Um, 
really prominent commentary. I, I just think a lot of people go around, you know, uh, thinking that this is like a Christmas tree. I, I guess you could use it as a Christmas tree. I don't know why. Oh, see, I accidentally broke one of the pieces off there. That's a good image, though. Those two little bands, those two little lines of stomata there. Nothing on the front. You know? And, uh, no needle, the needles are growing uh, in a line on either side, not all around, like a spruce tree or a fir tree. But, uh, I think that's a pretty good place to cut it off. I kind of want to take a shortcut through here because otherwise I'm going to have to walk all the way back up there and around. But, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. I don't think I'll be taking any chances. So I think we're going to cut it off there. Um, this has been the first, you know, full episode of Necology. I hope to see you back again, and uh, we'll cut it off there. Have a wonderful evening. Um, literally, have a wonderful evening, and uh, we'll see you again soon. All right, it was a bit too dark to uh, show you this when I was out in the woods, and uh, yeah, I know, I, I ended the video, but I uh, had to come back and just show you that I, I did actually find a uh, hemlock cone when I was out there. So this little guy, and this is ooh, this is not a miniature cone or anything. This is the uh, as big as they get. This is what the um, uh, cone from Tsuga canadensis looks like. Just ooh, just a small little egg shaped cone compared to uh, you know uh, uh, I believe this is off of a Norway spruce, uh, which is which is not native to the area, but people people grow them a lot around here, which would be uh, Picea abies. Um, and as you can see, just the size comparison between the two of them is uh, considerable. So if you see a tree and it's only, uh, you know, you're, you're really not sure, even after I showed you uh, how to tell it from, you know, from being a, in a, a spruce or a fir to a hemlock. And um, the firs will have larger cones like this too. Uh, just look and see if it's got a little tiny cones like this or if it's got, um, you know, bigger cones. Because uh, if it's got the big cones like this, it certainly would not be a uh, hemlock. Anyway, that's really it. I swear. Have a good night.